Hi everyone, the Lord Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games. Let's get started with EVE Online where I spent a little bit of time exploring but I've also uh, done quite a bit of hunting of those new Triglavian scouts. It's actually perfect uh, for uh, some solo uh, gameplay in my opinion. Uh, you don't use the probe scanner but you use the D-scan. Um, and uh, you don't need to travel that far in order to find those Triglavian scouts. Basically, once you've got a system locked down, they do tend to respawn pretty quickly from my experience. Not always, but quite often. And so to get a, a good uh, chunk of gameplay in, which is decently rewarding, I don't think it's as rewarding as exploration itself, but uh, it's, it's a lot more steady, of course, because uh, the good drops can yield you like 10 million uh, in those databases and then of course with a little bit of luck on the on the salvaging you can get a decent income i think from hunting these triglavian scouts so i'm definitely le looking into that activity and uh, i'm actually enjoying that quite a bit at the moment I also saw a decent amount of the FanFest from Home discussion with CCP Hilmar and CCP Burger. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, CCP is apparently moving to different headquarters as well. Um, so they're in full evolution basically at the moment and highly focused on EVE Online. So yeah, I'm really curious to see uh, how all of that is going to evolve. We should get a pretty massive FanFest in 2020 as well. And uh, hopefully we get some nice uh, changes, plans for the game. I think they have some pretty solid plans with uh, with the Triglavians to be honest and of course Jita is also going to get like a redesign or an expansion or something like that at least a Jita 44 station where most of the trade is happening so um, it's still fully ongoing the Chaos Era is gonna get its next big uh, shakeup with the Sino change next month and then we'll see how things evolve towards the winter I personally am also curious to see if CCP is then going to announce an expansion or something like that uh, for the winter as well that could be pretty cool uh, next to all of that just did the regular stuff a little bit of blueprint copy business and uh, some pi just to keep up with that but overall yeah pretty uh, good time in eve online last week especially with those new triglavian patrols i actually look forward to trying different chips uh, different metas in order to uh, to handle uh, that content Next up we have a little bit of uh, X4 Foundations, well when I say a little bit I mean a lot because I was quite addicted to X4 Foundations. Um, at this point I basically had one playthrough where I feel like alright I understand the game at this point, I've got some auto traders running, I got some auto miners running, I made a couple of stations, I got a, like a military fleet and lost a battle against the Xenon. Um, I also uh, did some of the story missions so I, I have the teleportation now I have the uh, the headquarters which I haven't done anything with uh, but overall at that point and, and it's quite a few hours in I feel like okay I understand the game I could get uh, like a fresh start and I could then make my way with, with a more solid plan but at this point I really do think that I'm gonna wait for the universe to be a bit more expanded for the split to come in and uh, at this point yeah it's it's a little bit small it feels quite restrictive although uh, I think for the right players people that love sci-fi people that love a sandbox experience and people that love like, building up uh, um, not necessarily a town or an empire in this case it's like a corporation that passively makes you lots of credit so you can buy and do whatever you want uh, is really cool and it is really fun and the game itself is very impressive uh, in how it works in my opinion because all those systems basically run in real time you could teleport to any of your ships and potentially you could find yourself on npc ships that's actually something that happened to me before i had the teleportation ability uh, my uh, my uh, my combat ship went into storage i couldn't find it back i didn't know about chief d at the time and so i found myself on a different ship i thought it was the trading ship that i had given an order and bought in that same station but no it was actually an npc vessel uh, so i was just looking around what the hell is happening uh, um, thinking I was on on my own explorer giving it the order to come back I saw that the ship went back and I was still somewhere out there in space going for uh, another station I was really confused but it turns out that I found my way on an NPC uh, an NPC freighter that was just doing his rounds and so it would have been very difficult to uh, get out of that situation um, 
and I did decide to reload but that is one of those things that that rarely happens in games these days I was really surprised I made a mistake and I went into a situation that was completely crazy uh, and 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 out of the box basically but it was actually pretty damn funny and it shows I think the potential of, of uh, x4 foundations where you could be anywhere where everything is actually happening uh, you could get on you could imagine being on any bridge there seeing fights happen seeing the trades happen seeing the docking the undocking the problems that you have the medium ships being able to use those uh, those highways and the large ships cannot all of those things play a really big role in the game and uh, yeah overall i think that uh, it, it is an awesome game for sci-fi fans for sandbox fans and uh, for people that like to like build up uh, in, in a game not necessarily for action fans i think the uh, the the, uh, the the gameplay when it comes to f uh, combat is definitely lacking it's a little bit too much of yeah, either you're dominating or you get dominated and and it's over in in like a matter of seconds i think most people will end up just sending their fleets out to fight and and not getting involved themselves it's more of a management game than an action game uh, but you can definitely in that universe um, explore build trade fight do whatever you want to do and that is actually a great feeling and a great accomplishment uh, of x4 foundation so i actually made several more videos you're going to get them in the upcoming weeks and uh, then i actually look forward to uh, the first expansion where we get an extra race and normally more systems a more expanded universe that will hopefully also fix the economy because you do see how you're gonna reach limits very quickly uh, when it comes to uh, to the, the current state of the base game uh, of x4 but uh, then yeah i'm looking forward for another start and we'll see how that evolves as well x4 foundations guys uh, for uh, for the eve players out there i do think that you will enjoy that quite a bit and then I also decided to take a look at some Dota Underlords. Just played a couple of games and it was actually pretty funny because uh, I played the first one and I went for Elusive with Slark, which was an idea that I had done because Slark is OP in my opinion. And Elusive is, is pretty um, investment intensive, but it's, it's quite doable actually uh, if you do save enough gold to quickly get to 9 and 10 heroes or as quickly as possible at least. And uh, I won that first game and then I won the second game as well so it turns out that uh, at the moment that is a very strong meta go for elusive with a slark and uh, playing the game right now i personally feel like it is more balanced um, and you have to make some tough choices uh, early on especially economically i see uh, like games that end where players only have eight heroes and things like that so if they decided to invest a lot more on getting uh, two star and three star heroes they don't have uh, the the goal to get to 10 heroes at the end of the game so yeah it's it feels a lot more balanced uh, it feels like you actually have a chance to have a comeback as well uh, just by switching up and, uh, and and going a rock paper scissors route against the better players and things like that uh, I don't see like full domination anymore where the first most lucky player uh, has 100 HP and then becomes practically unbeatable after uh, maybe the first 10 rounds or something like that I really don't see that anymore it's a lot more a lot more balanced and that does make it quite a bit more fun to play as well to try out different combinations as well uh, while uh, I say that uh, on the other hand it, it becomes uh, pretty obvious pretty quickly which are the more dominating metas which are still the overpowered heroes and so that staleness is still in there but it, it's a lot better because of the better balance at the moment I think in Dota Underlords I'm not sure how much more of that I'm going to play especially with World of Warcraft Classic coming next week but uh, we'll see and as always I'll keep you guys up to date that was my last week in games thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time